Welcome back. I'm Melissa Harris Perry. So this week I decided that President Obama must oppose comprehensive immigration reform. I mean it. I am now utterly convinced that the last thing that President Obama wants to happen is for our Congress to create and pass common sense legislation that will boost the economy and benefit the country. How do I know he's against it? Because on Thursday, President Obama clearly articulated that one of his top goals is ensuring that comprehensive immigration reform gets done this year. It's not smart to invite some of the brightest minds from around the world to study here uh, and then not let them start businesses here. We send them back to their home countries to start businesses and create jobs and invent new products someplace else. I'm not running for office again. I just believe this is the right thing to do. I just believe this is the right thing to do. See, it's sneaky because it sounds like he supports immigration reform, but as you and I both know, the best way to make sure that Republicans in Congress will refuse to act to ensure that they will take absolutely no action, to be certain that they will stonewall, even if it is to their own detriment, is of course for President Obama to say it's his priority. Well, there is one other way to ensure that the GOP will stand in staunch opposition to a policy, present empirical evidence of how it will benefit the country. They just hate that. So here you go. Back in July, the Congressional Budget Office said the current comprehensive immigration proposal will cut undocumented immigration flow by as much as 50 percent, that it would spend $30 billion on new border agents, fencing and surveillance, and that it would lead to a savings of $135 billion over the next decade. And fulfilling every expectation on Friday, the day after President Obama called for passing the Senate bill, Republicans begin their campaign of resistance. Republicans reported that they have no plans to vote on any immigration reform legislation before the end of the year, which for them is just 19 days that they have left in session. Even Republican Senator Marco Rubio said, get this, the Obama administration has undermined negotiations by not defunding his signature health care law. Yep. Comprehensive immigration reform is dependent on defunding Obamacare. One Republican even compared immigration reform to the Affordable Care Act in order to justify going at it piecemeal. Said House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte in a Thursday night statement, quote, our immigration system is in desperate need of reform, but we don't need another massive Obamacare-like bill that is full of surprises and dysfunction after it becomes law. Don't forget the sequel to this year's debt ceiling battle is coming up before February 7th, which is the next deadline to raise it. And all of these various governing responsibilities led Republican Congressman Tom Cole to say on Friday, we're not sure we can chew gum, let alone walk and chew gum. So let's just <laughs> chew gum for a while. And this is why I assume the president must not want immigration reform. I mean, he couldn't possibly think that Americans elected officials could walk and chew gum. At the same time, as Greg Sargent pointed out in the Washington Post, the president dared House Republicans to prove that they can do more with government than just shut it down. Now, uh, obviously, just because something is smart and fair and good for the economy and fiscally responsible and supported by business and labor and <laughs> the evangelical community and many Democrats and many Republicans, that does not mean that it will actually get done. <laughs> This is Washington, after all. You know, rather than create problems, let's prove to the American people that Washington can actually solve some problems. Clear to me that President Obama must hate the comprehensive Senate plan, because by pointing out that it is serious, needed, beneficial, he has pretty much ensured it will never pass. Joining me now to discuss this are attorney Raul Reyes, an NBC Latino contributor, Princeton professor Julian Zelizer, author of Governing America, Silky Shaw, the interim executive director and communications director for Detention Watch Network, and Igor Volsky, who is the managing editor of ThinkProgress.com. So, Silky, I want to come to you. What is it that is broken about our system that this current Senate bill could, in fact, address? There are definitely a lot of things that the Senate bill could address. One thing, I mean, we work on detention, and one of the things that happened in 1996, so under Clinton, is that we saw a removal of judicial discretion for a lot of immigrants, including not just undocumented, but people who are legal permanent res residents in the country. And so the Senate bill would allow, actually, for some of those people who are mandatorily detained, required to be in detention, no discretion, some mandatory minimum laws, mm -hmm. um, would allow them to be an alternative to detention. So that's really exciting. But beyond that, I mean, the Senate bill isn't going to make a huge difference on that because 
on the, on the flip side on detention, the Appropriations Committee has actually put in a quota system for yep. the number of people who are detained. So for us, the quota needs to be eliminated if we're actually going to see those reforms. So, so it is a part way, but not fully the way there. I, I, I wonder, I mean, I was joking here about the president must hate it, otherwise he wouldn't come out for it. But yeah, it does feel, true. Julian, like, like this should be one of the, it, it should be like infrastructure. It should be a win. Republicans know they need to do immigration reform. There's a lot of push on, even from the right, to do it. Why is it so unlikely that it's going to happen? Well, let's remember this same tension played out under George W. Bush when he was for immigration reform, and House Republicans then didn't want to do this as well. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. have members from similar districts that we're talking about with the budget shut down who they still don't see the electoral incentives uh, to support this. And at mm -hmm. the same time, they are now also trying to position themselves as leaders of the party, and they want to hold firm not only for their own reelection, but to show Speaker Boehner, to show the Senate Republicans, they're calling the shot. So the key is to change the dynamics in those districts. Mm -hmm. I think that's where this game can be won uh, so that a very important piece of legislation can pass. Otherwise, it won't happen. But at the, the moment, I mean, out. New York Times reported this morning that at the moment, all the dynamics in the districts Raul, are, are pointing towards ways to block it, right? So if you, right. If you look at, at this New York Times article this morning, immigration poses threat of another Republican rift. Several Republican executives and donors who are part of a lobbying blitz coming to Capitol Hill next week said that they were considering withholding or had already decided to withhold future financial support to Republican lawmakers that they believe are obstructing progress on immigration. So this is this attempt to start to move that obstruction. Right. And one of the things we're actually going to see in this week, in the coming week, there's going to be another lobbying push in favor of immigration reform, but it's going to be by conservatives, by yep. uh, right. you know, agricultural yep. lobby, uh, business interest, and, and the, the faith community. But I, you know, what I have to say, since you showed the side yep. earlier of Marco Rubio, how tremendously disappointing his leadership has been yep. on, the, on, yep. on the issue or his leadership in quotations. Marco Rubio was elected and what he was charged with and the, the reason he became so ascendant in the party so quickly was twofold. He was going to make his party, he was charged with making his party more inclusive yep. and open and particularly to Latinos. Yep. And on the, on the other side, he was also going to help sell immigration reform mm -hmm. to uh, the, the Tea Party and many in the GOP. Mm -hmm. And he has failed on both of those counts. And not, you know, he has not, fa he has not tried and failed. He has really... He just gave up, He's just, advocated. He, he has yeah. not been a team player. He has walked away from it. And the, the, the most unfortunate thing and why it's so disappointing, we see the immaturity of his leadership because mm -hmm. every time the going got tough, tough, he either walked away or just said, oh, I, I'm not for it anymore. I'm not going to mm -hmm. do it. And that is, you know, it's very disappointing. A, a lot of people, I think, have Rubio rage these yep, days. Yep, mm -hmm. sure. The for all kinds of issue, different reasons. All yeah. kinds of reasons. But I think the politics also changed after the shutdown in really a remarkable way. I mean, before the shutdown, you at least had Republicans saying, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. We have to address it. Let's figure out, we'll go through the committee process in the House. Mm -hmm. Let's try to do something. After the shutdown, after they were so politically embarrassed, people like Rubio are now saying, we're not going to do it because right, Obama right, right. wouldn't cave on Obamacare. I mean, that's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to do down. something that's good for the country because we were embarrassed politically. Well, this, goes, this goes back to the three-year-old and the cat, yes. right? Like, you know, which, <laughs> which, we, which we had, you know, as a discussion in, in, in the first hour, right? This idea that this has anything to do with Obamacare. I mean, it does take us back to the Joe Wilson, you lie moment, right? Which I always try to remind people. Folks talk about it as a kind of old-fashioned racism, white man yelling at black president. But it was around the issue of whether or not health care was going to be extended to undocumented persons living in the U.S., right. right? And so it was, even in that moment, a kind of immigration anxiety. Right. Even there, we, we saw some of that anger. Although there was at, almost at no point through that whole process in, the, in crafting the health care bill, was there any serious consideration yeah. that the undocumented immigrants were going to get health care? And yet they fixated on that. But, mm -hmm. but to your point, you know, now we see people like Marco Rubio, also Congressman Raul Labrador, saying we can't to immigration reform now because of the shutdown that we caused and the big mess that we created so we're going to take our ball and go home. Mm -hmm. I mean there it's so childish and grossly irresponsible to all the people awaiting you know, all the undocumented people and their families the communities who are waiting for this reform that could be life-changing. Yeah. This is a moment when social movement pressure matters in American mm -hmm. politics. Yeah. Yes. I mean during the civil rights movement you also had a lock in the leadership mm -hmm. no one was doing anything and the way that the politics changed was the movement created pressure 
pressure in Washington yeah. and in the districts, especially on Republicans, to depart from the Southerners who were blocking progress. And it wasn't just civil rights activists, yep. maybe akin to immigration rights activists. Mm -hmm. It was actually the faith community in places mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Illinois who were going and they were talking to Republicans and saying, you have to vote a different way on this. And it changed the vote. And it, it was the same kind of issue. I love that. And we, and we saw this with, I mean, this is how DACA gets, right? The Dreamers became yeah. the one pressure point that was so clear and, and where there was as there was at certain points in the civil rights movement, like this sense of national interest in this group of young people exactly. that, that we did at least get the deferred right. action. Stick, stick with us much more. And I want to come specifically to you, Sylvie, because you mentioned a few things that we have to talk about that I don't think folks know about the quotas, the responsibility to actually requiring us to detain thousands of immigrants every day when we come back.